Hi, welcome to the next episode of Differentiation. Today, we are going to talk about increasing function, decreasing function, and what's the scope of testing? What are the skills you definitely must know? Okay, so without further ado, uh, let's go in. So increasing function and decreasing function, your main skills that you need to know actually is being separated into two keywords. So the two keywords that you need to know and you can spot in the question is the word range or show and proof. So these are the two keywords you need to know. So if the question okay, has got the word range, okay, it means that this graph behaves like a cubic graph. Okay, and range is asking you this question when. When is the graph decreasing? So when is the graph decreasing? We will say from this point to this point, if this point is minus two, this point is five. So we will say that the graph is decreasing from minus two to five. So this portion of the graph, it behaves in a going down manner. So we call it the range question. So we call it, when is it going to do that? The next kind of question is a show question. This one, of course, this is something like we wish our bank account will only increase and will not decrease. For example, okay. So if we have this y equals to x plus three, this graph is an always increasing graph. So I want you to show that it is always going to increase and not decrease. So we call this a show question. So how do we show and how we find the range? Okay, so we are going to come up with these two key kind of question that you need to be able to answer. Okay, so now let's start. Okay, so for range question, Because this topic is dy dx, so we need to find the dy dx. Step two, for the range question, because we need to under, answer this question when, so we will always solve dy dx greater than zero for an increasing function. Okay, so my, my gradient uh, is when is it moving up? Okay, so that's the meaning of increasing function. Increase, when is it increasing? So that is called dy dx greater than zero for increasing function. So for decreasing function, it will be the reverse. Okay, then in step three, we solve the inequality. So when we solve the inequality, there are many kinds of inequality. Of course, if we are lucky, we get a linear, we will solve it like a set one inequality. If it is not a linear, we will use a graph to solve the inequality. Okay? So these are the main three steps for range. We want to find the range of increasing function then we will first one, step one, find dy dx. Step two, when dy dx is greater than zero. Okay, so when dy dx, we solve dy dx greater than zero. Third step, we will solve the inequality. Okay, so let's go to the first kind of question. Okay, so given that my fx is x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x, Plus four. So this one it is given to me. So can you see the keyword? Find the set of value of x. This is asking you when. When is my graph going to be a decreasing function? So my first step, like what I said just now, because this is a dy dx question. So first you go and get your dy dx. So I'm going to get 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. So as step two, okay, this step, why is it important? Because this is worth one mark. So you just write 
for decreasing function dy dx is less than zero. For increasing function dy dx greater than zero. That's why this is one step. So we put this as a one step. So now I need to solve in the third step. So when I solve the inequality, 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 less than 0. So it is not difficult to see that I need to solve this inequality. Okay. So sadly to say this is not a linear inequality. Anything that is not linear when we solve, we need to draw this curve and ask okay how to solve this inequality so we will need to factorize this okay so now when this is the x okay so this point here will be three this point here will be minus one so I just want to solve this inequality. I'm asking, when is this curve less than zero? So I will shape this below part. When is this curve, this quadratic curve less than zero? So this quadratic curve less than zero will be between minus one to three. So this will answer the question, okay? Between minus one to three, this curve that I'm circled is going to decrease. So in real life, when you sketch this graph, okay, when you sketch this graph, this graph has a turning point, okay, has a turning point, say something like at minus one. And then when it comes to three, it will turn up, okay. So between minus one to three, can you see this curve at this stage here is going to decrease, okay? So this means that the answer minus one x to three, this curve is going to decrease. How the curve behave, it will look like that. So this will answer the question, when will the graph decrease? And this is my set of value or my range of value that I'm answering the question. Okay, so show this on the number line, I don't want to touch on it, but this is the example of how to show, you know, how to find the set of value of x when it is a decreasing function. So you stick to this three step, step one, find the dy dx, okay, step one. Step two, write this statement down all the time. Okay, I want to solve it. Step three, you solve for x. So these are the three key steps. Okay, so now let's do the next question. So the curve is given by this equation. So show that the dy dx is this, so you will execute a quotient rule to do that, which I'm not going to focus on in this video. So can you see this word? Determine the range of value of x. So when you see this question, range of value of x means my step one, I must do a dy dx. Okay, so you go and do your dy dx and you should get this answer. If you don't get this answer, take this answer and proceed on. So now I need to teach you how to analyze the second step. Okay, for decreasing function, you write this one worth mark, so always write it. Okay, so now I will have x minus 3, x plus 1 over x minus 1 bracket square. So I'll put this less than 0. So now in my third step, I need to solve this. So when I solve this, this Solving will take some analysis. So now we need to address this number less than zero. Okay, what's the meaning of less than zero? Less than zero means uh, in common sense, this is a negative number. Okay, it means it's a negative number. So numerator, I got a number. So numerator, 
divide by denominator give you a negative number. So my denominator is a perfect square and that x cannot be 1. I am safe to say this denominator will always be a positive number. So something divide positive will give you a negative number. That means that my x minus 3, x plus 1, must be less than zero. So my inequality will depend on this number that I am highlighting. As long as this number is a negative number, which we will write here. Okay, as long as this number is a negative number, my dy dx will be less than zero. So now from a more difficult inequality it becomes a simpler one and this one can be solved within your ability because this has been solved just now all you need to do is draw the curve and solve it okay so you will put here as three here as minus one when is this positive quadratic curve less than zero i will shade this portion and that will answer the question Next. So when is the set of value where y is decreasing? So you can see that this, this function changes and your first step doesn't change. You still do your dy dx. So when you do your dy dx, you do by a quotient rule. So my quotient rule will be, okay, I hold v at the bottom. So now v, I differentiate this. So it's going to be e to the power of 2x plus 3 times 2 minus of okay, 1 e to the power of 2x plus 3. So this is a quotient rule. So I'm going to simplify it. Okay, I'm factorizing out my e to the power of 2x plus 3. I'm going to left with 2x minus 1 over x squared. So now you see this dy dx is more complicated. For a decreasing function, I execute a step two. dy dx must be less than zero. So I write for decreasing function, dy dx must be less than zero. So now I proceed on to the third step. Solve this inequality. So now you need to analyze again. So now for this to be less than zero, which is a negative number. Okay, sorry, for a negative number. Then, now you observe this. Is this a positive or negative number? So you can tell me this is a positive number. Okay, so is this a positive or negative number? This is a positive number. E, the power of anything, will always be positive. So since this 2 is always a positive number, that means that the inequality you are solving is 2x minus 1 less than 0. That means that this number here, for overall to be negative, this number has to be a negative number. So therefore, when you solve it, it's just a linear inequality, and then x will be less than half. Okay, so that will answer the question, the set of values again. Okay, so today we have done range of value, how to answer the range of value question. In the next video, you will learn how to prove the increasing or decreasing function. So quick summary on the three step. Okay, so the three step, okay. Number one, first always find the dy dx. Number two, when it is an increasing function, you want to solve dy dx greater than zero. Always write it down as one step in your working. And in the third step, you need to solve. Okay. So in solving the technique, okay, you use it like a fraction. Okay. Then of course you just think of each individual part. Okay. And determine each individual part. And then take the part out that will give you as a negative number or a positive number. Okay, with that, okay, I'll end today's session.